Well, good evening, Gateway Church family, and welcome to our prayer meeting online. I hope that you're well, hope you've had a good start to this week, and that you're looking forward to joining together with us tonight online to pray and call upon the Lord. If you're watching us tonight and you have a prayer request, we'd love to pray for you as a church. You can send in your prayer request to us through whatever platform you're watching this on right now, or you can also send it in to us through our website, gatewaychurchcamry.co.uk forward slash prayer requests. Tonight, we're going to come to the end of our sermon series called When Jesus is in the Room. And I'm looking forward to sharing this word with you. And then right at the end of our meeting, we're going to be praying together and calling upon the Lord for the different prayer requests that have been coming into us. But let's just begin our time together as usual by praying and asking Jesus to speak with us and meet with us tonight. Would you join with me and let's pray together. Jesus, we are just so grateful that you are you is always open to us, Lord, that you long for us to pray. You, you long for us to call upon you, Lord. And Lord, I thank you tonight. You're the God who answers prayer. Lord Jesus, you're the God of the impossible. You're the miracle working God. And Lord, nothing's too difficult for you. And Lord Jesus, I pray tonight that as we come together online, you will speak to people. You'll encourage people, Lord, that you'll answer prayers. You'll bring about healings and, and breakthroughs into different situations, Lord. And Lord, we ask this so that you would be praised and honored. So Lord, we just commit tonight to you and we pray, come, speak to us, draw near to us tonight. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I can't believe that tonight we come into the end of our series when Jesus is in the room. I hope that you've been blessed and encouraged as we've studied this passage of scripture together from Mark's gospel, the story of the paralyzed man and we see the powerful things, the incredible things that happen when Jesus is in the room. And I pray that we'll see Jesus do these things in our lives and also in the life of our church as well. This is our prayer. Lord Jesus, be in this room. We want Jesus to be the center of all things. We want Jesus to be number one in our lives. And this is our prayer as a church as we move forward. And so tonight we're going to look at the final thing that happens when Jesus is in the room. And we'll read the whole passage of scripture together in Mark chapter 2 and I'll read it from the Passion Translation of the Bible. This is what it says. Several days later Jesus returned to Capernaum and the news quickly spread that he was back in town. Soon there were so many people crowded inside the house to hear him that there was no more room even outside the door. While Jesus was preaching the word of God four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man but when they realized they couldn't get even get near him because of the crowd they went up on top of the house and tore away the roof above Jesus' head. And when they had broken through, they lowered the paralyzed man on a stretcher right down in front of him. When Jesus saw the extent of their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, My son, your sins are now forgiven. This offended some of the religious scholars who were present. And they reasoned among themselves, Who does he think he is to speak this way? This is blasphemy for sure. Only God himself can forgive sins. Jesus supernaturally perceived their thoughts and said to them, Why are you being so skeptical? Which is easier to say, to say to this paralyzed man that your sins are now forgiven or stand up and walk. But to convince you that the Son of Man has been given authority to forgive sins, I say to this man, stand up, pick up your stretcher and walk home. Immediately, the man sprang to his feet in front of everyone and left for home. When the crowds witnessed this miracle, they were awestruck. They shouted praises to God and said, we've never seen anything like this before. You know, I've been reading recently about some of the great revivals and some of the great spiritual awaken, awakenings that have taken place right across the world in the past. Revival is a subject that's close to my heart. And I'm sure you've heard about some of these great spiritual revivals in different nations in days gone by. America has seen a lot of spiritual awakenings and revivals. They had the first great awakening with Jonathan Edwards. We read about the revivalist Charles Finney as well. There was the Azusa Street Revival and the Jesus Revolution in the 1970s and even the Brownsville Revival at the end of the 1990s. Canada has seen revivals with the Toronto Blessing. Africa is seeing revival with the Reinhard Bonnke Crusades where over a million people are coming to hear the gospel and lives are being changed. People are finding Jesus as their Lord and Savior. China is the fastest growing church at this moment in time. We see the underground church there where people are surrendering their lives to Jesus on a day by day basis. Australia has seen great revivals with the great Pentecostal churches 
out there which Smith Wigglesworth has even prophesied would happen. Even here in the UK, we've seen God move in days gone by. Incredible moves of God which have changed culture, which has changed society, where we've seen the church awaken. In England, there was the Wells Revival in 1859. Then there was the Hebrides Revival, and there was uh, revivals in Ireland, and even right here in Wales. We've seen two great revivals in our most recent history. Again, in 1859, and then the most famous revival of all for our land was the 1904 revival. You know, we've seen as a nation, God move in mighty ways. But you know, as I was reading about these awakenings, as I was reading about these revivals, I began to wonder and I began to ask God, God, can this happen today? You know, we read in the last verse here of this story in Mark's gospel, the story of the paralyzed man, that when Jesus is in the room, spiritual awakenings happen. Nothing is hard for God and God can cause a spiritual awakening. Listen to what happens after this guy gets healed of his paralysis. Mark 2 verse 12, immediately the man sprang to his feet in front of everyone and left home. When the crowds witnessed this miracle, they were awestruck. They shouted praises to God and said, we've never seen anything like this before. You know, the words revival and awakening, they're often interchangeable, but there is a distinction between an awakening and a revival. A revival is what the church must experience. When Christians grow cold towards the Lord, where they lose interest in God, they lose their love for God and the things of God. And a revival is when God pours out his spirit and awakens the people of God again, where they have this fresh love for Jesus, where they put Jesus first in their lives. It's when the church comes back to life and becomes what Jesus intended it to be. And we need a revival in our time. I'm praying for a revival in our time. It's a return to that first first love for the Lord. But you know, an awakening is different. An awakening is when God moves in society where God moves on the hearts of non-Christians and begins a spiritual awakening within their lives. It's where God sovereignly pours out his spirit and it has an impact on culture around us around us. And we see that happening here in the story of the paralyzed man. This isn't a revival, but it's actually an awakening. People who didn't believe in God, people who, who maybe believed in God but didn't have a relationship with God, they were all struck. They began to sing praises to God. There was basically an awakening happening here when Jesus was in the room. They were in awestruck as Jesus performed these two miracles of forgiving this guy's sin and then healing him physically. It's like the spiritual lights inside their heart were suddenly turned on. I love that word there, that they were awestruck as they seen Jesus perform this miracle. Those words there, we've never seen anything like this before. This is an awakening. These people who were spiritually dead were now alive in God's presence because of what Jesus were doing. Jesus was spiritually awakening these people. And the evidence of that was they began to praise God. They began to celebrate. They began to just just pour out their love and their affection for God. They were praising God. And there's this praise party that takes place in this house. There was this holy awe, this holy reverence, and this holy celebration that was breaking out in this small house in Capernaum. You know, I would have loved to have been there. It would have been absolutely incredible to see that happen, to be in the presence of Jesus, to see that happen. It would have been absolutely amazing. And you know, that's what happens when Jesus is in the room. When Jesus is in the room, people who are spiritually dead, dead in their sins, are suddenly made alive, are suddenly awakened to our God. When Jesus is in the room, there is a great spiritual awakening. And you know, this isn't the only time we see it happen. But time and time again in the Gospels, wherever Jesus goes, yes, there's opposition, but there's also incredible, great awakenings as well, where Jesus awakens people to him. But you know, I began to think as I began to read this passage of Scripture and as I began to read the stories, is it possible today? Are spiritual awakenings possible today? Are revivals possible today? You know, it's been a long time since this world seen a real outpouring of God's Spirit in that way where people on mass come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. You know, here in Wales, it's been over a hundred years and I believe it's far too long, but but can it happen in our time? You know, the, the great evangelist of the 20th century, Billy Graham, he also wondered this as well. 
Long before he he preached the gospel to over 250 million people, long before he had his great crusades, Billy Graham, I heard a story the other day, he took a tour of a house in America. It was actually John Wesley's house, who was the famous English preacher who who played an incredible role in the first great awakening in America. And Billy Graham, he went with this tour. There was a tour guide and there was an other, there was a big group of people and they were touring around his house. And, and they noticed in Wesley's bedroom that there was, were on the floor, there were some indentations. And those indentations were where his knees were when he was praying. There was a, a mark left by John Wesley's prayers. It's absolutely incredible to think that, that there was a mark, there was an indentation in the floorboards in his bedroom where John, uh, John Wesley was praying and you know the tour was carrying on it was it was going on around the rest of John Wesley's house but as they came to the end of this tour the tour guide realized that Billy was missing they didn't know where Billy was and so the tour guide obviously was starting to panic so he he began to look around the house and wondered where where Billy was he didn't want this on his conscience losing somebody from the tour but he eventually found Billy Graham and I wonder can you guess where Billy Graham was Billy Graham, the tour guide, found Billy Graham in John Wesley's bedroom and he was kneeling in the exact same place that John Wesley used to pray. And the tour guide said that Billy Graham was praying, Lord, do it again. Pour out your spirit again. Do it again, Lord. Little did Billy Graham know or realize that God was going to use him in a great way in the 20th century to lead countless people to Jesus as their Lord and Savior. But you know, that began with this personal desperation to see God awaken a nation and see God revive the churches. You know, Habakkuk 3 verse 1 to 2, Habakkuk made this his prayer also. Habakkuk 3, 1 to 2 from the Message Translation of the Bible. A prayer of the prophet Habakkuk with orchestra. God, I've heard what our ancestors say about you and I've stopped in my tracks, down on my knees. Do among us what you did among them. Work among us as you worked among them. And as you bring judgment, as you surely must, remember mercy. You know, I believe that a spiritual awakening is possible in our time. I believe that there is a generation right now in churches right across this land who need to be awakened again, who need to be revived and restored and have that fresh love for God again. I believe the the church here in Wales needs a great revival. You know, there were over 2,000 churches built in the 1859 revival and many more others in the 1904 revival to cater for all the people who were going along to church, who were longing for Jesus, longing to be in his presence. And you know that we've seen in recent time these churches shut down and closed, but I believe we need to see these doors opened again. I believe we need to see new churches being planted. I long to see that happen. We need to see the church revived. But I also believe there is a generation who know nothing of God, a generation in our society, a generation in our, on our doorsteps right now who know nothing of God. And that's why we need a great awakening. We need a great awakening of God. Wales needs another great awakening and the church needs another great revival. You know, church programs and services won't revive people and awaken people. Clever sermons won't awaken people and revive people. Worship music won't won't awaken people or revive people. But there is one who can. And that is our Lord Jesus. Because when Jesus is in the room, spiritual awakenings happen, revival happens. And you know, when God is moving in the place, people are awakened. You know, that will only begin. I believe we'll only see Jesus do those great things when we invite him in the room. And we do that through praying and getting our lives right with the Lord. You know, as we come to a conclusion of this message tonight, and as we come to a conclusion of this series, when Jesus is in the room, Let's be encouraged that when Jesus is in the church, when Jesus is in our lives, when Jesus is in our homes, when he's in society, when Jesus is in the place, powerful things happen. When Jesus is in the room, there's standing room only. When Jesus is in the room, the word of God is preached. When Jesus is in the room, faith begins to rise. When Jesus is in the room, things get messy. When Jesus is in the room, expect great opposition. When Jesus is in the room, expect the miraculous miracles take place, signs and wonders take place. But when Jesus is in the room, there's also a great spiritual awakening. Be encouraged tonight. When Jesus is in the room, 
there is powerful things that happen. We need Jesus in our church. We need Jesus in our lives. We need Jesus in our homes. Our nation needs Jesus. This world needs Jesus. And when Jesus comes, powerful things happen. So let's make that our prayer. Lord, we need you. Lord, do it again. We need you. Come, Lord, by your spirit. Let's make that our prayer because when Jesus is in the room, powerful things happen. Amen. So we're going to just spend some time right now praying. And we're going to ask God to just pour out his spirit again, to revive the church, to revive this nation, but also to revive me and you. It starts with us. It's us getting our lives right with the Lord. It's us saying sorry for the wrong things that we've done. It's us putting Jesus first in our lives again. It begins with me and you. We're also going to pray tonight for God to move in different circumstances and situations, to touch lives, to heal lives. That's what we're going to pray for this evening. Pray for the different requests that have been coming in. So I just want to encourage you right now as we come towards the conclusion of our service, would you join with me and let's pray together for this. Lord Jesus, we're just so grateful for for Lord Jesus, just seeing what you can do when you were in the room. Lord, we thank you for this incredible passage of scripture, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the amazing things that can happen when you are in a place, Lord. And Lord Jesus, our prayer tonight, my prayer tonight, is Lord, that you would just come and just, just to have your way, Lord Jesus, in our church and in our lives, Lord. Lord Jesus, we declare this evening, we need you. I need you, Lord. This church needs you. Our community needs you. Abraham and Abadir needs you, Lord Jesus. The surrounding villages need you. This valley needs you, Lord. This nation needs you. Jesus, we need you. And Lord, we know that when you come, you can do more in a second than we can do in a lifetime. You can change lives. You can heal the sick. You can transform situations, Lord. Nothing is too hard for you, Lord. And so, Lord, Lord Jesus, we just ask that you would come. That you would just pour out your spirit that you will pour out your spirit in a mighty way. Lord, for every person who's watching online right now, Lord, you know their spiritual condition, Lord. Lord, those who don't know you as Lord and Savior who are watching, I pray they'll find you. Awaken their hearts tonight, Lord, to realize your life, your love, to encounter you, Lord Jesus, the living God. Lord, I pray for those tonight who are watching, who, who once knew you, who have maybe backslid, or those in our church, Lord Jesus, who have grown cold towards you, Lord. Lord, I pray, awaken your people, revive your people, Lord. Lord Jesus, as Habakkuk said, Lord, in wrath, remember mercy also, Lord Jesus. Do what you've done before. Revive this the church, Lord Jesus, and awaken this land, Lord Jesus. That is our prayer this evening. And Lord, I pray you will also minister into situations. Those who send in prayer requests, Lord, with those who are sick, Lord, family members and friends who are sick, I pray you'll heal them in Jesus' name. Those, Lord, who are worried about their future, Lord, may they know your peace and know that you were in control, Lord Jesus, of their future, Lord. Those who are having troubles in their home and even troubles and difficulties in the workplace or school or university. Lord, may they know you as their protection and their fortress. Help them and guide them, I pray, in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we pray the same for right across the world, Lord Jesus. Just minister, we pray, Lord God, for wherever people are watching this from. Just touch hearts and lives tonight, Lord. Lord, we thank you. Nothing is too hard for you. And so, Lord Jesus, we just lay all these requests before you. Lord, we can't do these things, but Lord, you can. And our trust is in you. Our hope is in you. Our eyes are on you tonight, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you that we belong to you, Lord. We thank you. You've heard our cry. And we ask all this in the name that is above every name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, I pray that you've been blessed and encouraged over these last few weeks as we've gone through this series. If you'd like to listen to this series again, then you can check it out on our website and also through our YouTube channel as well. Just go back to the the prayer meeting messages and They'll all be on there as well. But I've been thoroughly blessed myself as I've been studying this passage of Scripture. And I hope that you have also. And let's make that our prayer. Lord Jesus, we need you in the room. I would like to just invite you to join us as well over this Easter period. There's not going to be prayer meeting for the next two weeks during these Easter holidays. But we are going to be coming together. Good Friday. Join us as we pray and call upon the Lord and remember what Jesus has done for us on the cross I'd like to invite you to join us on Easter Sunday. It's going to be a great celebration together as we celebrate the fact that our God is alive. And I'd love to invite you along to that. There's going to be a special announcement in that meeting as well. And you don't want to miss it. So join us for that. And for more information about our Easter services, then please head over to our website, gatewaychurchcamry.co.uk. But I hope you have a great week this week and look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. God bless.